we're just uh, heading back to Tondi now to have a look at this heat exchanger. The weather's beautiful and calm, so it's a good day to be stuck in an engine bay. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get the, the whole unit off, hopefully, and then take it home and work on it at home. Fingers crossed. I think I brought every tool known to man to do the job. So we'll just see how we go. Okay, so here we are. It's quite humid. Um, this is the side I'll be working on. I'll get rid of the stairs. I'll turn these lights on and get to work. Righto, so far so good. I've just loosened that and this has all come away now. So now we've got access to the heat exchanger. Might be able to get the tube nest out. Don't know if I want to or whether I just want to take the whole lot. I should take the whole lot. Got to empty the coolant, drain it out, and I'll undo this and take this home and, um, and just check it out and then re-lag it if I have to. I've just uh, removed this and have a look at that calcium build up in there. That's the uh, feed coming back into the exhaust. So something tells me this is gonna be absolutely choppers. And that would explain why we're not getting cooling. So I've managed to uh, crack these ones, like just loosen that and that. But this one looks like it's gonna be a nightmare. Isn't it funny, you try like easy outs, somewhere down there, that one, all those things, and it always comes back down to the vice grips. I've just got this. God, it was hard work, but I've just cracked it, so I think I'll be able to get it out now. <laughs> that was tricky. Looks like I'll be buying a few extra fittings now. Yeah. Come on, puppy, let's go. Got it. That would explain a lot, wouldn't it? <laughs> it just can't even get out into the exhaust. And look at this thing. Holy shit. Is this part of a, an impeller or a leaf? Impeller. Old impeller. So I'm gonna take the whole lot off. Uh, just loosening this to get rid of the dipstick tube. Undo here, already undone that line and a few others. And then I am just gonna undo the bolts along here that tied into the block. And then I should be able to take the whole lot out in one hit, I hope. that my friends is a win it's out I can take it home recondition it bring it back and I know how it comes off now <laughs> and how to put it back on silly me yeah I'll take all this stuff home and do a bit of homework and order some parts and then uh, it'll be clean it up and bring it back I don't know how it was keeping anything cool very embarrassing Makes you wonder what's inside the tube nest. But this is definitely the worst part of it. Okay. Woohoo. Yeah. Oh. So far, so good. Gotcha. All right, that's all right. So I'm just trying to decide whether I should strip all the paint off before repainting it. And um, I think I will, or have a go at it, because sort of everywhere you touch, it, um, it just sort of flicks off in parts. So if I paint it, how do I know it's not gonna just do that?
to this. I think we should just make this way out. Here we go. And it's in good nick. Like dirty, but not corroded, not broken. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, all the heat exchanger components are in there and all the other bits and pieces, the elbow is in that. And that is literally just a tiny bit of um, dishwashing detergent and fresh water. And I'm just gonna let it sit in that overnight before I do the, uh, the hydrochloric acid dip. This uh, engine is an Iveco 4041 M40. And that, means that it's a Lombardini LDW1404, which now means it's a Cola, K-O-H-L-E-R. So just a quick tip might help you out. So this is normally on the end of your heat exchanger, it comes out here, and you want to put a new anode in, which is here. Um, what I have found happened the other day before we went away was that I screwed it in and it didn't seem to want to go all the way. And I felt like it was bottoming out on the casing here. But it's actually like this is 25 mil long, and if you look in here, there is quite a bit of space. It's um it's probably 30, 35 mil long. So what was happening for me was that I was screwing it in, but it was hitting on the corrosion and probably bits of the old anode. Um, and that's a real good sign. So if you've, all you've got is that going on and you feel like you're bumping up against something, probably want to go and check, maybe just take this hose off and have a look and see if your exhaust outlet has got any calcification or any buildup because it's a, that, just screwing that in and feeling that resistance will tell you that you're bumping up against some, something in there and you shouldn't, you know, I've screwed that almost all the way in and you can see there's, um, if I just take it one or two more turns, so that's that's as far in as that will go. You can see you've still got five or 10 mils left there for that anode. So there should be no reason why, until you get right up to the end of your thread, why you'd be feeling any resistance other than what I had, a massive buildup of calcium and gunk here, which in turn blocked my exhaust outlet, which essentially caused the overheating. The tube nest is fine. I haven't even dipped it yet. And um, I mean, it wasn't fine, but at the ends it was blocked up a little. But that's about it. So uh, yeah, just a little tip. Righto, so I've got some acid and I'm going to give this a clean. Um, it's pretty good already because I've just given it a, a scrub with um, a couple of brushes. But We'll get the uh, acid down through the tube nest to give it the best chance. So make sure you've got a um, container big enough to fit your tube nest in. 10% hydrochloric acid to water. Now I don't know if, what they mean when you've already got 32%. Maybe that's how it's meant to be. But I'm just going to use one part of this, nine parts of that. So probably make up 10 litres all up in here. Let it go. It says in the manual just to let it go till it stops reacting or fizzing. Um, I'll just have a look at it over a bit of time. Then it'll get dunked straight into that, uh, which is just fresh water to give it a good rinse off, completely rinse everything out. Then once that's done, I'll put it on the concrete here and I'll hose it down, make sure I've got it completely um, clean so there's no res residual acid on it. It's three litres. Six litres. Nine litres of water. And by the time I put this one litre on, that'll be totally covered. Water, one, acid. 
that out of the sun. Plenty of fizzing going on in there. God, let it go. You see that? It's loving it. You can see the, um, it's like a cloudy mix is coming out from the inside. So it's definitely reacting with um, the scale on the inside of the tube nest. So that's great. So it's been about five minutes. It's still reacting a little bit. I put the end caps in as well, um, but it's really slowed down quite a lot. I'm just going to give it a little brush along. I'm sure I showed this to you before, but that's, that's basically cleaned everything right off. That's fantastic. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I think I'll just dip that in the fresh. Just let it soak in that fresh water for a little bit and then uh, hose it off with some more fresh water. And that'll be it. Whack it back in the heat exchanger. So I am really happy with that. That has cleaned up absolutely spotless and the tube nest is spotless and clean and beautiful and to think two days ago I was in a bit of trouble and uh, now I found in my O-ring kit, I've found that uh, that one there should do the job. So I'm going to actually put this all back together because I'm basically uh, on borrowed time down at that mooring down there. And uh, if I can get this together, it might be good enough to take me home. And uh, then when I get the new parts, I'll fit them. So three applications of paint stripper and uh, that's as good as it's going to get. Anything that's still on there doesn't want to come off, so that's fine by me. I'm just going to dry it out now because I've washed it and I don't want any moisture in it. So I'll just use a heat gun to warm it right up, dry it out. Then I'll hit it with um, some etch primer and then some, um, oh, I think it's, uh, what do they call it, an epoxy enamel. Okay. Right, so all I've got to do now is uh, give it a wipe over with acetone and I'm going to mask up any of the areas that I don't want paint getting on and uh, start painting. Okay, so the heat exchanger is all back together and ready to go down to the boat. I've got a new thermostat that I can put in there as well. Um, water pump's ready to go. So this is the plan. 
pretty much brought every tool I own <laughs> down onto the boat. And we've got the heat exchanger rebuilt in here. Unwrap him, stick him in. Don't let Sandy see the galley. I don't think she'd be too impressed. Water pump's ready to go. New sea strainer. Well, it's pretty hot and sweaty in here, but I'm nearly done. I've just got to put the water pump on, fill it full of coolant, crack the seawater, make sure that it's all full of water, and then um, start it up, check the leaks. That's it, 2,800 reds. on track baby